Hey, Scooter Tramp, Scotty. We're in Myrtle Beach, uh, South Carolina, and it's just after the Myrtle Beach rally. We've worked, and we're going to talk for a couple minutes. We're here with Chip Parisi now. He, Parisi, he's been um, living on his motorcycle for around a year, and so we're going to see what he's got to say about it. Ah, good morning, Chip. Good morning, Scotty. You look great after such a long trip deal. Just got a great shower. Can't complain. I, <laughs> I love this this park we're in. Now, we know that you've been on the road for about a year now, and but the thing that I know a lot of people don't is that before you did this, you were a very successful real estate salesman. Yeah, for about ten or twelve years. Yeah, I've heard you start giving me the uh, say, the real estate sales talk, and I'm like, oh, there's the schmiel, you know. <laughs> oh, I, had the I had every script. I had every answer for every question. You guys did really well from what I understand. We did well, especially my last five years. I got hooked up with the uh, number one team in the state in Rhode Island. And uh, between their training and their uh, their lead generation, um, you know, I can't take all the credit. I had a lot of hands helping me, and uh, we all did really well. I'm going to try to get you to talk a little bit loud because of this thing. I don't know how it records. Okay, so... Um, what was that like and why did you leave it that's the thing i'm curious about because here you are living like this you know i mean i'm looking at your camp and your bike yeah you know uh it sounds crazy because i wasn't the guy punching in nine to five working 40 or 50 or 60 hours a week like a lot of folks um, i had it pretty good it was a glorified part-time job maybe 30 35 hours a week a bunch of weeks off and i was making great money um i guess i was just restless it was like once I started making a lot of money, I kind of felt the pressure that I always have to keep making this money to maintain this, to maintain this lifestyle. And I pause it. <laughs> My question is, what was it like? That, what was it made you want to leave something like that? You know, you yeah, had a big think, house and all that stuff. I think when it comes down to it, I'm kind of a commitment foe. Where, you know, I, I made the big commitment of marriage and I, I didn't want anything else. My first house was a four family house. The tenants more or less paid for most of the bills, so I felt like I was never really stuck under that 30-year mortgage. And then uh, through some savings and some uh, some flips that we did, we were able to buy this other house more or less outright, so I never had that 30-year mortgage over my head. Uh, what made me want to leave was, uh, you know, I, I was kind of sick of living the same week over and over again. It was a great life. I had an amazing wife. Uh, it was just, I looked down the pipeline and said, boy, is this going to be the same thing over and over again for the next 30 or 40 years? And it kind of scared me. I said, I kind of want to go make an adventure out of my life and do something novel and do something exciting and, and something uh, that every morning when I wake up, I'm kind of excited to see what the day brings. Ah, you wasn't getting that with that, huh? Not that I wasn't. We, we, we vacationed, we had adventures, um, but it wasn't anything like this. You know, I, I really got bitten by the bug when I was about 20. I saw a short film called True Fans. It was uh, three guys that took bicycles from the, east, from the west coast to the east coast. And man, I saw that movie and three months later I was on my bicycle with two buddies going from Rhode Island to Florida. And I realized uh, that was 01. And I realized for 15, 16 years, man, I talked about that trip like it was the best time of my life. And I, I always thought about it and I was kind of fond for it. And then uh, once my life changed and I got divorced and uh, sold the house, I said, boy, I might as well leave the job too. And, uh, you know, go try this motorcycle vagabond thing and see, see what the road has to offer, I guess. How are you liking it so far? You're about, a, about year in... a year in. So far, so good. I got no major complaints. Things seem to always fall in place. I don't have to worry about all that much. Um, I've been fortunate enough to meet guys like you that have kind of laid the blueprint down. You know, you, you did all the hard work and figured out what works and what doesn't. And I'm, I'm taking what I've learned from you and some other folks and kind of put my own twist on it. That's what I did. I learned a lot from Billy. My experience has been is that Wanderlust is a is a uh, personality type I always wondered what was missing because I lived in San Diego and I was a roofing contractor and I had the big house and cars and trucks for a while too but uh when I got out on the road there was one trip I took I went over the mountains and landed in the desert and I just knew I knew I belonged out here and when I was, when I got out here I began to find out that one or less a personality type there's other people who have it some don't have it they're happy to stay home other ones have it and they love going on their trips they love going home but those who have it in the extreme aren't happy unless they're traveling that was my experience with it yeah i find it the same as when i was five and six years old riding the bike around the block i always hated on the bicycle when you know you kind of had to turn around and go back home <laughs> my favorite thing about this life is uh not turning around you know, every morning we're going someplace different and uh, i was home over the winter for a couple weeks uh, a couple months and uh 
you know, went for a couple rides with guys, and it's the same thing. All you do when you're living at home and riding your motorcycle is, hey, where are you headed today? Well, I'm headed home. I just don't know how I'm going to get there. I'm leaving home, and I'm going to come back and circle around. You're going in big circles every day. Where this lifestyle, I really like getting on the road, getting up in the morning. I don't know where we're going today. I know we're heading towards D.C. Um, I don't know where we're sleeping tonight. I don't know what the Me neither. Is break, <laughs> it's going to be a great day. And I love that. It's, it gets addictive. And, you know, like I said earlier, I'm not I'm a commitment folk, so I'm not saying I'll be on this on the road doing this for 40 years, but I can't imagine going back to the normal way of life already. That's what happened to me. So I had to make this a life. I couldn't go back. Once in a while, people ask me uh, if I ever want to stop and I've like I've tried it a few times but it's too hard of a life this is too easy you work a little bit and the rest of your time's off and it's always on to the next adventure my experience has been that it's there's a lot of dead time broken up often by great adventures true Impressed. Um, hey minute tell me that when I was when I was talking to him before and it sounded like that life was kind of killing him yeah the last two years of my my old life like I call it um, I had no reason for it but I just wasn't happy you know, I don't know if it was could be diagnosed as real depression or I just was down and out. But you know, I, I was making plenty of money to live comfortably. Had an amazing wife. Had a nice house in my hometown. Plenty of friends around. Nice cars. Um, but it wasn't doing it for me. I, I, I felt anchored. I just felt uh, restless. I wanted to go do things that other people weren't doing. I, I've always kind of been a rule breaker, and I kind of wanted to see, you know, why do I have to follow all these rules of, you know these steps in life the societal rules the basic general rules yeah go to school get out get married have yeah, kids, that's right whatever. you've been you got a college education don't you yep four-year degree in uh something or other <laughs> <laughs> my experience with this chip is there came a time when i had to start following my heart and i had to stop pretending that money and stuff equaled success because you know the suicide rate among rich is identical to that is among poor and I had to follow what was in my heart. And when I started doing that and started really getting more of an idea who I really was. Now, it ain't heaven. No life is heaven. And all lifestyles have their hardships. But I can't even imagine not doing this anymore. That's yeah. my experience at this point. Well, you know, I've been out here 23 years now. Yeah, you know it better than anybody. It's not all flowers and roses. Nothing is. You Nothing know, is. It's, it's still life. It's just a different life. And... Um... You know, I realized exactly what you just said. You know, you get weighed down by your possessions, and they end up, like the old cliche, your possessions end up owning you. That's right. Now, if I remember correctly, you still own a three, four... Uh, a, a big apartment house. Well, not big, it's small, but it's a, it's a multi-family apartment house that I, I bought with uh, right before I hit the road last year trying to save myself. I had a little bit of money, and I said, boy, if I hit the road, maybe I'll last five or six years not working, and then I'll be really broke, and I don't want to be broke. I've never been broke. <laughs> and I don't want to be there, especially after talking. Now you're working rallies. I'm trying. I got some money in the bank still, and I'm trying to just sustain this life. I'm trying to stay in the black. I, I want to not spend any more than I make. So I got a certain amount of money in the bank that I, I don't want to see that go down. If that starts going down, I'll probably get off the road and get a job for a while, and you know, save up enough where I think I can get back on. So, this, this is my first year working the rallies. It's only been, well, Daytona was in March, but then you have a, mo a month off. Well, my experience has been is that the road's self-perpetuating. Now, I'm going to get a little philosophical. A lot of people, we know I'm not religious. A lot of people believe that, like, God has a greater calling for every person. But I can choose not to take that. I can choose to follow my fears rather than my heart. There came a place when I had to begin to follow my heart. And uh, I've been out here for all these years without any visible means of support, and I've never gone completely without. I've gotten low, but anymore I hardly ever get low. So, you know, <clears throat> that's been my experience with it. <clears throat> Following this, and now I don't, you see, I don't worry about money that much anymore. I try to let it out slow, but I'm... Not after that dinner last night. Well, that fucking dinner, man. <laughs> we got, yeah, we got railroaded into that one, yeah. <laughs> The last thing I want to know is that apartment comp, that little apartment complex you got, is it pay, is it making money? No, last year I thought it was making money, and as a former real estate person and a current, I guess I'll call myself an investor because I still have an investment property, uh, you shouldn't really be trying to live off the monthly profit of a house. The house is supposed to be a long-term venture where the money you make is supposed to go back into the house, keep it nice, and then at the end you kind of cash in, hopefully it appreciated and it's worth more. I was breaking that cardinal rule and trying to live off that money. So last year I was on the road about five or six months total and I didn't really work at much at all. I worked in Sturgis for 10 days and I worked in Daytona in October for a day or two. And I was kind of living off what I, what I thought were my profits until I went home over the winter and all that money that 
I had quote unquote made on that property went back into it. It needed it repairs, huh? You know, that had to come out of my savings. So, um, no, right now I'm not making money on that house. Right now I'm, I'm just hoping every month I break even. <laughs> it needed repairs. The stuff I've owned, it seems like the more stuff I have, the less freedom I have. Yeah, because it could be, you know, a month working rallies could go up in smoke. In yeah, that's one right. Major problem at the house. So it's either I got to get that thing a little profitable or get rid of it or something because it's just not working out the way I really hoped it would. Well, so we'll see what happens with Chip here in the future. So far, he seems like he's really digging this. <laughs> this here is our campground. This here is our campground that we're staying in. And this guy, Kenneth, this is actually an RV resort. For some reason, he just lets us stay. Scorpio got us this place. Today we'll be leaving and we'll be taking a slow ride up the up through North Carolina and up to DC and we got two or three days to do it and it's 450 miles and that's it.